Hello, welcome to another NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by El Himador. Ah, take a breath. <laughs> it's a long title. <laughs> we no, back, baby. We are back with another program. We have a great show today. Uh, we have an incredible guest midfielder for NYCFC. You may have okay. heard of him. Okay. You can't miss him because he's quite tall. Uh, <laughs> Keaton Parks is joining he's us He's the today. reason that the photographer has to move the camera back a little bit during <laughs> the team photo. Home is kind of tall. Exactly. You know okay. I mean? You know, you got to get, uh, that's why the photographer has a little stool to step on. To get, <laughs> you know, you're like, yo, is that team starting two goalkeepers? <laughs> no, nah, dude. Nah, fam. That's just Keaton Parks out there. <laughs> okay. I do uh, like how we New Yorkify his name, Keaton Parks. It's like, it's like no T. He, he, he sounds like a like a, a park that's in the Bronx. You know? Oh, you've been at Keaton Parks? I... Yeah. Yo, are you watching 106 in Keaton Parks? Yo, dude. My favorite show. Okay? Are you kidding me? I can't wait to see what happens next week. So, no, we're excited to, to be here. Yes, we, uh, we are the Cooligans. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. All right. And we, uh, we, have a, we have a lot to discuss, a lot to look forward to, especially the, the last couple of weeks. NYCFC has, has been quite impressive right they've been yep. a little you know the the mls is back tournament didn't end exactly the way we liked right but now the regular season is here and we're, we're cruising we're, we're, right? we're gliding up the the eastern conference standings let's look at it in in space right the first two matches of the season before covid not great right mls is back tournament a little better yeah. Phase one of the regular season. Yo, we balling. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. We reopening. All right. I start the season now. <laughs> Cancel everything that happened before it. So, hey, look, at the end of the day, as long as you're continuing to get better, does it matter? Right. And it feels like NYCFC, from where we started to where we are now, it seems like teams are coming into games against NYCFC as being like, Yo, they're a hard team to beat. Seems like we're back. You know what yeah, I mean? Back does, to that. It, it does feel that way. You know, last uh, year when we went on that, that that long stretch, even you know finishing at the top of the the Eastern Conference, that's what it's starting to feel like. There's a bit of the you know the swag. The swag yeah. has returned. Right, we got our groove back, yo. Like <laughs> okay. we're just slinking up our way up the Eastern Conference. Like you know, is this how you climb a rope? I don't know. I've never had to. You know what I mean? Whoa! I don't think ask your boy. That's the most exercise Alexis has had in years. I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, I need a. I need to uh, spray some deodorant on. <laughs> a lot's happening in my back. Uh, <laughs> yes, but yeah, we're going up. What are we in seventh place right now? This Correct. Is at the at, at the time of this recording, seventh place. So uh, well, there's no games. <laughs> Between now and when this airs, so, who yeah. knows? Okay, <laughs> you don't know what's gonna happen. It's phase three. What happened to phase two? Yeah. Okay. Was I asleep this entire time? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no. But there's uh, we should we should take a look uh, at the 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 previous two matches and just to see how we've gotten here. All right, let's take a look at the last two matches NYCFC played. Both pretty good. Both very different. <laughs> Quite you different, know? right? One was a victory. One was a draw. Uh, but And yeah. one of them didn't even have a team show up, which was <laughs> shocking. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, let's start with the against the New England Revolution at Gillette Stadium. Uh, a, a goal from a, a bear from just obviously a, a, a corner a header. I always love it when NYCFC scores headers because we're, we're not really a header type of team you would assume it's like alex ring or maxime cheneau yeah we've had a couple i, I right. honestly i think there's been less than like six in nycfc's existence i could right. be wrong but it's something like and maxi morales is one of them which right crazy blows everyone's <laughs> mind yeah <laughs> there, there's not too many there might be just uh, look uh, i might be one or two off but to, to see that to see uh nycfc score on set pieces is a is it shows that there is a a, a new found uh, and clear confidence this season, you know, to, to be able to right. score like that. Uh, and, and here's why I also love it. A bear previously, I thought he had scored, but it was listed as an own goal. The defender yeah. got his foot on it before a bear scored it. Yeah. So this is it, the smile on a bear's face was back. You know what yeah, I mean? He was, dude. he was essentially responsible for two goals because cer it certainly was his pressure. Uh, was it Mancian wouldn't yeah. have put his, wouldn't have put his foot out if it wasn't for a bear being there. So that that goal should count for him. And then a bear immediately comes back with a header like the smile. In, in the previous years, 
you know, the look on his face, we were in Costa Rica. Every time he scores, it's like a child scoring. You know, he's got this <laughs> glee to him, you know? Yeah. And you could see that he wasn't scoring for a while. It was bearing down on him. And I we got to see the fun, having a good time out there, a eh, bear. Yeah. That's the a bear we love. <laughs> okay, the, this guy. I love, yeah. This the guy I love, you know? I see, yeah. see the uh, lovely smile. Great dental work on that young man. You <laughs> right? <see> it. <laughs> Just what a glow he has when he scores. So it was uh, uh, impressive, yeah. And the that was, uh, you know, uh, New England Revolution, not, uh, you know, they're a tough team to play. So uh, to, to be that dominant, to get a clean sheet, also huge for Sean Johnson. Uh, right. uh, and then, look, another clean sheet that probably shouldn't have simply been a clean uh, sheet. I don't think anyone slept in either bed. Both teams got a clean sheet. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, against D.C. United, this game ended nil-nil. But really, the, when you look at the, the, the stat sheet, I mean, the, the glaring difference is it, it, it's almost like only, yeah, like you mentioned, only one team was playing the game. You know what I well, mean? Well, <laughs> if you didn't, if you didn't see this, NYCFC had 80% of possession. That's a lot. Not like in the first five minutes. Out of for the whole out match. Of, out of 100, bro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, if you do the math, that means there's like 20% left over. But you know, you I'll let you nerds figure all that out. <laughs> yeah. You know the 80-20 rule? I didn't know it was about NYCFC versus DC United. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening over there? <laughs> uh, yeah. The, 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 to see that. to see, And then on top of that, 19 shots to zero. To zero. Zero. I don't understand what the exact approach was for to, for DC well, United. Why don't I answer that for you? Because <laughs> Ben Olsen said, that's how we chose to go about this game. This is a quote. I'm not making uh -huh. this up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not asking for credit, but I am looking for a little appreciation on how our team defends. <laughs> it's not always about the offensive side. The defensive side is very important part of the game, and we did it pretty well the last couple of games. You did it so well, you didn't even get to touch the <laughs> offensive side of the game. But this is definitely one of those things you say, like after the fact, you know, when you've uh, when you've not when things didn't go as planned, but like. Things worked out a little bit for you. Right, right, right. You know, it's like, like when you trip and you're like, yo, I, watch out. I There's meant, something wrong with the street. No, no, we're like, nah, I meant I meant to do that. That yo, was like, I wanted I wanted <laughs> to drop this boba tea. <laughs> All right? Because I didn't like it. <laughs> Why am I crying? Why are you crying? Oh, that's boba tea all over you? Oh, okay, fair. Yeah, fair. dude, you know, it's like, give me some credit for spilling the boba tea all over I, you, okay? You, there wasn't tapioca on the floor before I got here. So, if anything, you know? the last couple of times I went to the tea shop... I think we I tripped pretty well. So <laughs> I think I've decorated the place a little bit to be honest. You should be thanking I, me. All right. I, whose Buick is this? Because they're gonna be upset. <laughs> oh my god. So look, it, it's it's kind of inexplicable. Not not exactly inexplicable. The the NYCFC played so well, right? That's if we're getting to the point where teams are like, yo, give them the ball, let them we'll get them on the counter. And, right. and maybe they'll make some. They'll send too many players forward. Maybe, maybe they'll m make a mistake. Nah, we don't. We don't do that. Okay? Yeah, just park the bus. We don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> but look, obviously, a, a bunch of great chances uh, yeah. that probably should have been put away. Uh, it is what it is. We have to take the point and move on. But as far as like the performance, you got to be happy with it. And look at this. I mean, we we talk about like we, we used to be inside the bubble. Now we're inside the locker room. You know okay, I mean? yeah. <laughs> a bit of, bit of an upgrade. I'm liking these new digs. You know, I, the lighting is a little better. Air conditioning works. I'm enjoying <laughs> it. Uh, but this is a, this is awesome. We got uh, we got another player we're going to interview. Uh, and this dude, I'm born and raised in Newark, New Jersey. There's an entire section in Newark, New Jersey that is going to go ballistic. Right. Right now, knowing that I'm talking to this guy, <laughs> because not only is he an incredible midfielder for NYCFC, but we remember you may remember him as playing for Benfica. You heard you heard of the team. That's one I, I think, what, the last 75 uh, <laughs> Portuguese uh, Primera uh, Division. I'm a little familiar. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard of them. They're pretty big. They <laughs> shut down half of Newark every time they win, which happens on the cal on the on the calendar. Uh, but we absolutely love him um, as a midfielder for our favorite team. Obviously, NYCFC. We're wearing the shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only. Keaton Parks. Keaton, what's up, man? I'm doing good. How are you guys? <laughs> Not bad. 
All right, dude. I'm loving uh, the 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 clean white uh, tee, looking Thank like uh, you know uh, a dem franchise boy. You know, right? He the... got he got all New York on us. He's just straight up wearing a white tee. You wearing Tim's under that? King? No, not today. Not today. Oh, okay. Not today. All right, <laughs> dude. Uh, I absolute honor uh, to get to uh, uh, talk to you here on NYCFC at home. Uh, I I think we should uh, start with uh, simply the the. One of the craziest games I think I've seen NYCFC play, the match against DC United, was just surreal. I've never seen many matches where it was 19 shots to zero, and the team with 19 shots did not end up with three points. 80% that- possession. <laughs> At some point, you must have been like, I don't even want the ball anymore. This is too much. <laughs> give me give me one. It's how disrespectful. Did, how did it feel? Have you ever been of a part of a, a game like that that was so lopsided? Uh, not professionally, no. Uh, growing up, like my team always played possession like that, and like we we would run into some opponents that that would give us a lot of space and stuff. But I've never encountered that professionally, and it, it, it felt weird for sure, like having that much possession and that much time on the ball and and that many touches. So it was definitely weird for for us on the field as well. What they say? What the coach said at halftime? He's like, "Look, I don't even know what. I don't think they're trying. <laughs> you know? They don't seem to want to. Be. Did they bet on you guys? What happened?" <laughs> it's uh, yeah, like, look, and and not to be too harsh or anything, but like, how did it? I mean, look, obviously there were opportunities, there were there were chances. You had a good chance uh, yeah. that didn't that didn't you know hit the back of the net. Uh, when especially as a midfielder who is not you know in general, most midfielders are not getting a ton, a ton of chances. And obviously when, when you do get one, you really want to at least try to get it on frame or really get the, the kind of the best opportunity. What, um, what did it, what did it feel like, especially at halftime when you like, you know, you're trying to put, how, how did you feel either just either missing that chance or trying to set somebody up to, to, to kind of get one? Yeah, I was very disappointed uh, and very angry at myself because like, in a game like that too, once you get one goal, then the floodgates open and you start scoring more because the game opens up more. So I mean, that that was a huge chance, and I should have done a lot better. And I was very, I was pissed off at myself the rest of the game, like for the next day or so. So yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was it was rough. It was tough, and like we had a few guys that missed other chances as well. And I, I know everybody was very disappointed and angry at themselves. Like, um, but you know, it happens. It's part of the soccer game, but. Yeah, like for sure, it was in my head. It was bothering me, and I have to do better next time. <laughs> when you yeah. when you miss that chance, you you sort of like you you were kind of dropped down. You bowed your head a little bit. When you come up from that, do you just jog back into position? Just don't make eye contact with coach. Is that what you, do? you just? <laughs> if I don't see him, I technically can't hear him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What, in, in, in the moments, empty stadium, right? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. I, mean? I mean, I can hear my name being yelled, but if I just keep <laughs> looking forward, tunnel vision. In that moment, that's what I would do. I would just pre- ignore it, pretend I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just, chances, baby. <laughs> I, I just ignore them and try to laugh it off and just don't look at anybody and just shake my head at myself and laugh it off and keep going. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, overall, though, uh, the, you know, ever since the MLS is back uh, tournament, NYCFC has looked uh, sharper than ever. I, I don't know exactly what uh, changed, especially after the, the, the Red Bull loss. The I, whether I, I had heard that the, the the locker room people in the locker room were saying I think Alex Ring had, may have said this uh, that that the focus was not on the opponent on uh, and to focus on ourselves and what we can do. So what has been th- that change in mindset to have these these incredibly positive results the last few weeks? Yeah, that that was a big one. Is that we weren't we're not trying to adapt our game to the opponent anymore or like kind of how we did uh, beforehand or like in the in the bubble. But like now we're just playing our game and we're going to let them adapt to us. And and I think that was that's a huge part of what's made us successful in the in the last games or so. Um, I've been playing more as well. So don't forget that. But okay. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, no, no, no hey, flex. No, no, flex all over this. Flex all over this interview. You actually oh, have You put yeah. me in the game. All of a yeah. sudden, team plays better. A lot I don't of know. things yeah. changed. I can name yeah. three off the top yeah. of my head. I'm playing. I'm playing, and I'm playing. So next thing you know, but you actually have been getting a lot more playing time, and this is your second coach with NYCFC. Right. What are some of the things that you think has changed? Um, because what I love about the way you play is, if you ask a hundred people, you're going to get 
50 people to say one thing and the other 50 are going to say the other 50 are going to be like, Oh, he's a great defender. He doesn't have to go forward as much. He's such a great defensive midfielder. I love the way he stops, you know, attacks from building. And the other 50% are like, what an attacking midfielder. I don't know why he has to play so defensively. That guy should be up there scoring. Who are you? Okay. And, and two, why do you think you're getting so much more playing time now? Because it's, it's exciting to see. Yeah. I mean, I'm like you said, I'm comfortable on both sides of the ball. And I think, I think, Maybe it's just hard to get to know me as a player. Like I, I'm very relaxed on the field. I play not necessarily super fast, but I'm I'm like very relaxed. I, I slow down the game, and uh, I think that's a huge part of, of football, and and that's a huge part of my game. And I uh, I think sometimes it's hard to to understand that right away. Like if you don't know me as a player or, or as a person. So um, like last year, Dome was a new coach to me, and I think it just uh, took some time to to grow that relationship. And then the same uh, this year with Ronnie. So. Um, I think that's that's part of it, but um, I, you know I always stay focused and, and keep keep balling until I get my opportunity and uh, and then help the team as much yeah, as I can. Yeah, you're showing that, man. I you know when you, Alexis just asked like, who are you? I I call you the seven foot Maxi Morales, right? <laughs> I, you're you're uh, <laughs> great on possession. You make you look chill. You're just you're just two times Maxi, and yeah. that's uh, <laughs> and it it's like out. the movie Twins. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive, uh, and you know we should also talk about you know you you did uh, I, I have a lot of like uh, youth national team uh, experience. Uh, and, and, and men's national team. What, what are those aspirations like as far as being, being an American, be, uh, an American that did play uh, overseas and, and got a great opportunity at a, at a big club? Uh, what, what, are those, uh, what are those hopes and plans like? Yeah, I want to be on the national team as much as I can. Uh, there's been obviously a pause in, in international breaks right now, but yeah, I want to get back to the, to the men's team and, and help the men's team and the U23s for the Olympics that got postponed the next year. Um, and I want to be a big part of that uh, squad, but that that all starts here at the club level and and getting performances and and doing my best here, and then hopefully it translate into that. But also like make, maybe going back to Europe one day and, and playing at a, at the top level in the world, and uh, maybe maybe that happening for me again one day. Yeah, I mean, and you're in a great club because you do have the opportunity. You got the guys from you know uh, Manchester City. Yeah, right absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your time in Portugal, in particular, how you got there. Because I remember when you first went, there was like articles talking about like you weren't a part of an academy or like I, right. I, I think it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're from the Dallas area or you right, were playing right. in the Dallas area, and it was a, a tournament in which you got uh, sort of seen. How yeah. I mean, did you think it was a scam? You know what I mean? When someone's like, trust me, it's a Portuguese club. You're like, sure, sure you are. I'm not getting in your van. You know, I don't know. What, uh, what exactly happened? What sort of what brought you to that moment where you were missed by Americans, but you were sort of starting to get scouted by this your massive European club? Yeah, it was. Um, so I played for a coach that used to play in Portugal and I started playing with him when I was eight years old. And. And I stuck up. I stuck with him until I was 18, until I graduated high school and went on to Portugal. Um, so he was like my connection there. He's the one that that developed me as a player and everything. So I stuck with him. I trusted him, and um, I mean, he got me pretty much here. He, he got me here today, you know. So uh, so he was my connection from the start, um, and that's why I, I skipped out on any academy, or switching any teams because I just stuck with this coach. And then. Um, and then he's like the one that like brought me to Portugal for a few summers to try out with teams and get my name out there. And then eventually uh, getting that first contract with the uh, with Varzim. So uh, he our, his name is Armando Pelaez and he was the guy that's that that set all this up for me. And that's been the been the guy for me that, that got me to where I am now. Yeah, that's incredible, because I'm sure when he first called, you know, and I mean, it's changed now. But at first it's like. I've got this American. Hello, <laughs> hello. You know, because back when <laughs> when you first went, an American in a European academy was relatively sure. rare, especially yeah. someone who didn't already have a name here. You know what I right, mean? Right. So, was it difficult for you when you first got there? It was. I was. I, so I wasn't at Benfica at first. I was at a smaller club, and uh, I, it was like you could definitely tell that people didn't look at me the same as like their their Portuguese like teammates and stuff like that. So. Um, I had to prove myself every day, uh, no matter what team I was at playing with the under 19s or the first team in the, at this club. So um, it, it was difficult like that. Even I, I know I have a story from Benfica when I went there for the first year at the B team. Um, this one guy that I ended up becoming friends with, like playing in the midfield with on the B team, uh, Jetson Fernandez, who's at Tottenham now, he he 
like thought I was like a joke. Like just an American guy. Like I wasn't going to make it on this team and stuff. And then like, obviously I started training, we started training together and I started developing and like we became good friends and good teammates and everything. But um, like later on through the season, somebody told me like, yeah, he used to like not like you at all. And like thought you were horrible and all this stuff. So <laughs> it was funny, like looking back on it, like after we became friends and everything, hearing that was, was pretty funny. That's like, it's goal five. The, the what yeah, you just yeah. said is the movie Goal Five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right, do you have you found a great pastage de nata in uh, New York? Yeah, no, no. So I haven't found it in New York. No, I haven't. I I guess I haven't really looked, but I'm I know for sure there's some like probably in New York or in Jersey because there's a big Portuguese community, right? So yeah, Newark. I, mean, I do need to look for that. So for sure, yeah. go check yeah, that out, yeah, dude. Uh, no, that's uh, that's it, it's great because it's like it, it is weird. I, I guess I definitely as any player, but as an American. Uh, you you have to deal with you, it's weird. You get into a team and all of a sudden you have to deal with like bullying until you are a, like <laughs> yeah. people trust that you're yeah, good yeah. enough. Right? Yeah. Until they're like, wow, he's not that American. What did they think you were gonna do? Pick up the ball and yell hunt, <laughs> hunt hike. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it just, it's like, yeah. but, but you know what? But thank you for for fighting those uh, stereotypes that yeah, yeah. Uh, you know for American for sure. uh, footballers. So the um, look, there's a, a a lot to look forward to. Obviously, uh, the next match against uh, FC Cincinnati. Cincinnati when when you think of defensive teams yeah. uh, you know it's uh, it's gonna be uh, DC uh, you know it's nice practice <laughs> <laughs> nice repeat right yeah. uh, but you know one thing I'm really curious about is it, this midfield is again looking really really sharp and one people that one person that's really also standing out and, and that probably doesn't really get a lot of national attention is James Sands James Sands it looks to be almost like this very important defensive piece and, and and uh clearly the the rest of the team is kind of giving him a lot more responsibility but what yeah. is it like playing next to james sands it's awesome like we him and i are really good friends uh off the field and on the field um and we have a great uh great chemistry together and like we talk a lot off the field about like what we're going to be doing on the field and like our movements off the ball and and off of each other and all that so um, it's I love working with him. I think he's a he's a great player. He reads the game so well uh, all, for such a young player as well. Um, and defensively, he's taught me a lot because I mean, like that's not my natural position. So I've learned a lot from him. Um, but he's he's great to work with because he covers a lot of ground. And and if you mess up, he's always filling like space for you and and recovering balls for you. So so that always yeah. <laughs> you always like to play with players that that help uh, help you with your mistakes as well. So. Um, I love playing with him, and and we we get along really well and and play really well together. So you guys are friends. So you can confirm this, true or false? He has laughed before. He has. He has. <laughs> yeah, okay, Just never he's a very camera. serious person. <laughs> As a comedian, it's so difficult because I just want to make him smile. <laughs> you know, that's all we want to do. Yeah, he but, he won't laugh on camera, but you'll yeah. catch him in the locker room sometimes. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, I don't want any any of uh, my opponents seeing any vulnerability. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> nah, there's no weakness in me, bro. I'm all business. His yeah. he 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 stares sometimes at the opponent. Like it's just spreadsheets and it's at like spreadsheets and binary code. Yeah. I'm like, yo, he is so ready to go. But it's nice knowing that you guys are friends because when you play on the field together, you do have a connection that's very right. obvious. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, dude. There's a lot. Yeah. Like I said, there's a lot to look forward to. Uh, so thank you, Keaton Parks, uh, uh, for joining us, man. Best of luck against FC Cincinnati. Uh, we're hoping uh, for three points, but we appreciate you taking time uh, sitting down with us at uh, NYCFC at home with the cooling is, man. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you, dude. All right, baby. Let's do a little match preview presented by EA Sports. He's like, yo, who's next? Next up, NYCFC will be playing against FC Cincinnati, and we should highlight very quickly before we talk about the match, a very uh, cool and very important, uh, you know, we have kits, right? These kits right now that say uh, Citizens Giving, choose Citizens Giving for the South Bronx. Yeah, Alexis's microphone is in the way. Uh, I promise it says that. <laughs> yeah, but and shout out to Etihad Airways for donating the the, the sponsorship on the jersey uh, yeah. for this match. And if you guys don't know what Citizens Giving is, it is. Uh, we, so we just hosted the the virtual fundraiser for Citizens Giving. That's right. That was uh, last night. It was dope. Yes, obviously raising money for uh, COVID relief uh, for New York uh, City Common Pantry and uh, a city in the community, which uh, obviously 
you know, NYCFC has been involved in, in not only just, uh, you know, being a part of being a part of New York, being part of the community, uh, exactly. tutoring, soccer skills, uh, coaching, uh, a bunch of stuff, opening uh, pitches all over the city. So that is why if you want to donate uh, and you want to bid on a kit just like this signed by some of the NYCFC players, make sure you go to the link in the description. The link will be right there. Uh, you can you it, it will be available uh, for uh, until uh, the 19th. So you can donate uh, and make a make a bid and really help you know a lot of people yeah yeah you, all this you, stuff goes to that to uh citizens in the community and a lot of and and charity i mean if you it's a great way to help you get an autographed jersey i mean why don't we we should autograph these jerseys i'll even leave the armpit stains <laughs> okay yeah if you want you know from alexa you, alexis did do a workout earlier right so it's technically, technically match worn exactly you know? <laughs> 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 so not not only do uh, 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 NYCFC players have uh, items that you could bid on, uh, uh, the Cooligans themselves, we have uh, a couple items there that you can bid on uh, That's as right. well. Uh, so again, city, you'll be supporting City in the community, and you'll be supporting New York Common Pantry, uh, and, and you, you will literally be providing meals uh, for people in the community that cannot afford them uh, due to uh, you know losing their job and COVID-related reasons and things like that. So uh, feel free uh, to donate and bid and and win some really, really cool items. All right. The so, link is in the description. Click on it now. Donate. Do it. So, uh, FC Cincinnati. What do we expect, Alexis? I mean, I think they're going to come out attacking. I don't, no, they're going to play defensive. <laughs> they yeah. usually do. That is uh, the strategy. You know, it, it's it's yielded positive results for them uh, once in well, a while. The, they're not they're not easy. They're not easy to play, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what they like to do is they like to sit back. They like to absorb a lot of pressure. And right at the moment that you start making a little mistake or one of your players is out of position because you've been bombing forward trying to score is when they attack. And look, they got that kid Frankie Amaya. Very, very good, mm -hmm. right? They've got a lot of options they just signed um a player who i can't remember but looks like he's going to be very good so at the end of the day they we'll just, do we'll have just have to take your word for it right i mean <laughs> hey link in the description i don't know if that's true <laughs> but at the end of the day they certainly have options but i think going back to what we said before nycfc are a much different animal right now when yeah. we came in when we come in it's you we're going to play our style just like keaton said if you need to sort of find a way to try to break us down. And at the end of the day, I don't think that's going to happen with FC Cincinnati. Dude, they just had a 3-0 loss against Columbus, who, yeah, top of the uh, top of the standings in the Eastern Conference. They're uh, they're sitting in 12th place right now, and uh, their record is 2-5-3, and three, which is a formation. That's never good. You know what I mean? <laughs> not, the, and not the best one either. I'm no, honest. no. You, got, you don't have enough defenders, my guy. Uh, yeah, look, I think the uh, NYCFC, I think, uh, frustrated with that you know, dropping those two points against DC United and they're going to take it out uh, against uh, FC Cincinnati. So I do, yeah. I, I expect nothing less, but, but three points here. Uh, and, and I, as far as a, a score prediction, I got to say, um, I think we, we have another possible three nil. I think FC Cincinnati is going to deal with those, you know, uh, double down on the three nils, d double bagels. At oh, <laughs> ouch. I think we got too many bagels, coach. Uh, dude, we've won. We've won them. We've uh, beaten them. The two games we've played them mm -hmm. overall aggregate score line is nine, three against them. So it stands to it stands to uh, to be, I guess, for me, if you want to average that out, I think it's going to be three one. I think we're going to win three one. That's the the average of the aggregate score. I could also see it being a two nil. I think three nil is a bit much, but I do think I could see it being two nil or three one. And I think this is where a bear scoring touch comes right back. We're going to see Moxie do his thing. Hopefully he plays. And I think the guy who's just on our show, Keaton Parks, he's gonna he's gonna make up. He's like, Coach, you, you, I'm gonna win you. I'm gonna win your faith back. Okay? Right? <laughs> him and him and James Sands are gonna high five because then we know they're best friends <laughs> after he scores a big one. And I think it's gonna be uh, three one. I'll say 3-1. I'll stick with 3-1. Okay. Hot off the presses. We actually just found this as we were taping this right now. We just got uh, a little bit of a, a little sneak peek at the schedule or possible yep. next couple uh, upcoming matches for NYCFC. So we know uh, the next, at least the next opponents are going to be uh, New England Revolution. Right. And that's an away match. Correct. And then we're back at home for Toronto and Cincinnati coming back again. Look at that. Okay. So, you know, we're going to be we quite familiar 
Uh, All right. With at least, uh, you know, the these teams we have already played uh, this season, uh, Revs and upcoming match against Cincinnati. So Toronto uh, comes back from their little stay in, in Canada, their little bubble in Canada, mm-hmm. right? Just smelling like maple syrup, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep, <laughs> Speaking yep, a little yep. French, <laughs> you know? Yes, yeah, so, and Josie telling everybody to be quiet, you yeah, know? Yeah, you know, yeah. Does. It's uh, too loud in New York. <laughs> he needs you to tone it down. So, uh, look, obviously, yeah, uh, it's nice to know that because we, we love watching our club and, and the fact that we just, you know, uh, get us the whole schedule, you know, yeah. sort that out. I want to, I want to know where, where, uh, you know, exactly what my schedule is going to be uh, for the rest of the season. It's okay? like your friend owes you money. You're like, where's my $50? He's like, I got $12 and 32 cents. <laughs> You're like, why? <laughs> Did you buy a sandwich on the way here? <laughs> okay. I don't need, uh, you know, I, I, we don't need to do a payment plan for you to pay me back. <laughs> don't get, don't make me get a calculator to figure out. <laughs> So, what you uh, owe me? Uh, so at, at least we know uh, those next three, uh, three matches. So that's exciting. Uh, so yeah, so enjoy the match against FC Cincinnati. We're uh, gonna be watching as well. Uh, yeah, shouts to uh, you know what? And shouts to NYCFC. Look at this. I got. I'm wearing my autograph cap. Who? Can you guess who that is, Alexis? It looks like a mixed disc route. That's right. Wow. Mixed disc route. And this one is, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to tell, but it's uh, RJ Allen. So okay. They're going to bleep both those names out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody, thank you All again right. uh, for tuning in. Enjoy the game against MC Cincinnati. Uh, and thank you for watching NYCFC at home with the Cooligans presented by El Himador. <sighs>